We have been traveling the rich fertile lands of Kenya, far and wide, across the highlands and lowlands of this beautiful country, talking to farmers wherever we go. We want to give them the help and knowledge they need to improve their farming methods, increase their income, and turn around their farms into good business for the future. Join us and our experts on this journey and share their families' experiences as they make the changes. Karibu to Shamba Ship Up Safari. We are here at Sigulu village in Bita constituency just near Lake Victoria. Now it's a beautiful and fertile land but we found one farm that needs to be shipped up. up. Fishing was once a big industry here but now more and more local farmers rely on their shamba for their income. Lawrence and Rosa Beck are one such family and they need some good advice. And so the shamba ship up team set up our base camp. So Lawrence, yes, we are very happy to be in your shamba. Thank you very shamba much. Shamba Shipper team is very happy to be here. Thank now, you. Now, how long have you stayed in this farm? I've stayed in this farm 14, 40 years now. 40 years? Yes. And how big is it? The shamba, the whole total shamba uh, plot is uh, 25 acres. 25 acres? And, myself, and it's all yours? No, <laughs> seven is mine. Okay. Yeah, yeah. What about the other acres? The other acres was divided to my brothers. Okay, okay. Yes. So each brother yeah, has a piece yeah, of land? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Each brother has a piece of land. Aha, it yeah. looks lovely. Yeah. It looks very lovely. Yeah. What, are, what are you growing here? I'm growing maize. Mm -hmm. That's my major one. Mm -hmm. I'm growing beans. Mm -hmm. uh, cassava. Uh -huh. Potatoes, mm -hmm. groundnuts. Wow. See, That's these are what I'm growing here. Okay, well, do yeah. you sell any at the market? Yeah, we sell locally. How about you, my dear? What's your name? My name is Rose Akini Odera. How many children do you have? Kumi. You have 10 children? Yes. Uh, wow. Wow, you, do, you don't look it, you look very young. <laughs> hey. So, how many children do you have here? Uh, oh, four kids, four children who live here. Yeah. And the rest of them? Okay. Mm. So, what problems do you have on the shamba? Sasa, mimi nimependa sana kupanda mboga, kitu kama kitungu, na ili nijisaidie kwa nyumba. Na sipati njia ya kupanda kwa ajili sina maji ambayo inaweza kutimia wakati wa ukame ah rose so this water is a big problem yeah. so where do you get your water uh, maji ninachotea kando ya karibu na ile mlima mhm uh -huh. e, tunaenda karibu na ile mlima huko kwa tunaenda kuchukua maji huko kwote eh wa that's quite far. That's yeah, that's quite, quite far. far. Mm -hmm. I can see you do quite a lot of farming here. Yes. So what problems are you going through in your daily farming? We have uh, a tiger weed. Uh -huh. That's a major problem in this area. Mm -hmm. And again, stock borer. Uh -huh. Stem borer. Stem borer is a major problem. We destroy our maize, especially when they are ready to, to germinate. Okay, okay. Immediately they shoot up if they are stem borer. Mm -hmm. There's a problem. It just destroys the Destroy whole the thing. Destroy the whole thing and you find the farm is completely out. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is the major problem we're getting here. Mm. Striker weed and the stem borer pests are very common in this area. This pest can cause losses of 30 to 100% of your crop if not controlled. A successful way of dealing with these problems is by using the SIPA research push-pull technology when farming. But to maintain the success of push-pull and to continue to grow big healthy maize, the push-pull method must be managed well. Myself, I wanted to learn more about push-pull. Ah. And other farmers also, we teach about push-pull okay. because we have seen the benefit of the push-pull. So do you keep any livestock in here? Yeah, we have livestock here. What do you have? We have uh, cows, our mm. local cows. Uh -huh. And again, we have goats. We have goats. Local, local goats, goats and uh -huh. the graded ones we also we have in this alpha. What problem are you having with your goats? Mostly the the, go the problem we are facing with the goats nowadays, this time, especially with, and some years back, mm -hmm. they have some nose diseases, you know, uh -huh. which attacks their mouths. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And again, you can find a goat is diarrhea. You cannot mm -hmm. know exactly why it is diarrhea. So you're, you're worried about the general health of yeah, the Yeah, the general goats. health of the goats. When we live here, yeah. we are going to meet experts. I hope my uh -huh. life will change if I go <laughs> okay. and do that. And then hopefully Naomi will see whether I can help mama with water. 
Definitely. Mm -hmm. We'll see to that. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's go get started. <laughs> yeah. You are very eager to get started, weren't you? Yeah, definitely. Fine, let's go and get started. Mr. Alois Ndiege is from ISIPE, the International Center of Insect Physiology and Ecology. ISIPE specializes in insect science for food and health, and they developed push-pull technology. Mr. Lawrence, this is Alois. He's an expert on push and pull. Mm. You have told me that you've been practicing push and pull. Yes. He's gone around your farm, he's looked at your maze, yes. he's looked at your method, and he's going to tell you what you're doing right, or maybe what you're doing wrong, and mm. how you can improve on it. Mm. I need more to learn more about post pull. Uh -huh. I wanted uh -huh. to learn more about post pull, uh -huh. so not, not to repeat the mistake. Exactly. Yeah. Let's remind ourselves how push pull works. By planting desmodium in between your rows of maize, it produces a smell that the stem borer moths that lay the eggs in the maize plant do not like. The smell pushes away the moths from the maize crop. Napier grass is planted around the maize crop as a trap plant. The napier pulls the moths away because the moths prefer to lay their eggs in the napier. So, a farmer can use nature to fight nature. The moths go to the napier where they lay their eggs. Mr. Lawrence, uh, you've done very well in your farm, push pull farm. Yes. There is one thing that you ought to have done yes. when maize was still below knee high. Yes. You ought to have uh, thinned your maize right. so that you remain with one uh, plant per hole. That's right. Yes. Thank so, you. like for example, yeah. look at these ones. Yeah. Are you seeing these two? Yeah, I see. This, which one is between this one and this one? Which one would you want to? Uh, is is, a, is is actually impressing you? This one. And this one is not impressing you. No, this one only Do you know the reason why? I don't know. It is because there is competition for nutrient. Okay. And that is why we are actually. I'm trying to advise you yeah. that after planting, yes. when the maize is uh, around knee high, yes. make sure that you thin them yes. so that they remain one, one, one per hole. That's right. Yes. Okay, good. Yeah. Thank you. Well done, Doc. Next, Alois advises Lawrence that his napier grass needs to be cut back. It should not be touching the maize. A gap of one meter must remain between the maize and the napier, and so the stem borer larvae cannot jump back and destroy the maize. Alois goes on to explain how the desmodium needs to be weeded. This can be done by hand. While Lawrence is learning how to manage his push-pull in a better way, I go to find Rose at the boma. Mama Cheng, Rose! <laughs> Look what I brought. Asante. Lunch. Asante. I thought we could have lunch. Yeah. So where's the kitchen? Where? That's your kitchen? Yeah. Now tell me, when it rains, what do you do? So you wait until the rain is over, yeah. so you can cook, so when the food is on, in the, on the jiko? That can't happen. Caris. Yes, Rose. Yeah. Shamba Shape Up Handyman Caris is called in to help build a basic kitchen. He's going to use recycled wood poles from the shamba and simple metal sheets. We'll catch up with him later. But now, it's time to look at the goats. Laura said they have some health problems. Luckily, we have Mr. Charles Wendo, an expert from Haifa International, visiting to offer some advice. So, Charles, yes. you're an expert with livestock and goats. Yes. Right? Yeah. So, what advice would you give uh, Lawrence here? The first advice is that, uh, Lawrence, mm -hmm. you should uh, have in place mm -hmm. a feeding trough. Yes. And maybe somewhere you can put some water also. Right. In a bucket. Right. Maybe two feeding troughs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The important thing is that is to check on the health of the uh, uh, goats. Yeah. Uh, they have ticks. You have to make sure that they, are, they don't have tic, uh, ticks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, they are clean. Mr. Yes. Charles, I really have a problem. Yes. Sometimes I'm expecting good milk from the, my goat here. Yes. I don't get enough milk. I don't know the reason why. What can I do so that I can get enough? So mm -hmm. this will depend on the type of feeds you are giving. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There has to be a combination. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have to give uh, 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 some proteins. Yeah some vitamins, yeah. 
za me carbohydrates yeah. a balanced diet for, yeah. for even for the goat yeah. then on top of that you can also have uh, mineral supplement okay. the mineral block yeah. put it here right. you get uh, good milk from the goats mr charles then shows lawrence how to check the goats but protective gloves must be worn to prevent the spread of diseases the ears horns hooves teeth eyes teeth and fur should be checked Mr Charles explains to Lawrence that worms cause diarrhea the goats need to be treated for worms plus we need to find a way of dealing with the ticks also if the goats had proper feeding troughs and fresh water they would be much healthier and produce more milk There you are Tony yeah. look I finished uh, checking on the goats I need to talk to Karis about making troughs. So could you do me a favor? Yes. I need an expert to check on the ticks on the goats. Why do you need an expert? I can do it by hand. No, I need an expert. Okay, okay, fine. Sometimes Naomi can be bossy, but if it helps the farmer, I don't mind. Mr. Charles Nyakweba from the Ministry of Agriculture hopefully has an answer to the tick problem. And what are you carrying for us today? So these are some grasses, grasses, uh -huh. which is used to, to control ticks. It, like, is a, it has some properties which uh, repairs the the ticks. Oh, they yeah. take off. Yeah, they take off. Is it the, they, does it release a, a, some kind of a smell? Or yeah, it kind of. Uh -huh. it, it really they don't like the mm -hmm. the, 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 the grass. Uh -huh. Ah, yeah. okay. And do you plant it the way it is? Uh, no, you there are seeds. There are seeds. Yeah, there are seeds which you plant. But where does he get this from? Now this one is a very even in uh, in the supermarkets. This is uh, Agrovet mm -hmm. and even from ECB. Uh, Charles, do you think this is a bit dangerous for my cow to eat it when it's uh, no, 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 no. Even if the cow eats, yeah. there's no problem. It's just like any other grass. Okay. Uh, okay. So it's like any other grass. Yeah, this is just like any grass. Yeah. But it only controls the thing. The, the ticks. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So he doesn't have to spray at all. Uh, no, 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 no. This will do the job. Yeah, game. yeah. Wow, then we should go ahead and plant it. it. So, molasses grass repels ticks from livestock without always having to use chemicals. That's amazing and saves money. To plant the molasses seeds, use string to measure around the livestock unit. The planting must be done between 1 and 2 meters away. Dig or drill a shallow trench along the string line. Ah oh, wait, why do you have to do all this by myself? He told me as a grandson. There you are, Mr. Sami Eto. How are you? You know how to do this? Okay, show me how. Sami Eto. Aha. Much needed help. Next, sprinkle the molasses grass seeds into the shallow trench. Then cover with light soil and water on a daily basis. It will take three months to grow, and we start helping to protect the goats. The new troughs have been built, and Lawrence has been advised on the best way to feed goats using his push-pull farming. The napier grass is cut into small pieces and mixed with chopped desmodium. This is a ratio of three parts napier to one part desmodium. Fresh, clean water is also important. Now. The goats are happy. Talking of water, Rose has a rusty and a broken gut ring. It's not much use at all. Karis. Yes. Now Rose needs water to cook and wash. And what I'm thinking is, since since this uh, gut ring is quite old, yes, we put some new gut ring for harvesting rainwater. What do you think? Can you make it? Yeah, we can make it. Okay, good, cool. By harvesting rainwater, you can save time by not having to walk to collect water so often. By using plastic guttering, it prevents rust and will last for many years. Tell me, how are you getting along with your ship up? Great, and it's really nice helping Rose, you know. How about you? Ah, oh, Lawrence is learning so much about push pull and with time he'll make good good progress. And there's still lots to do on Shamba Shepherd.
We are still here in Bitter Constituency, very near Lake Victoria, shaping up Lawrence and Rose's chamber. And instead of just sitting here chatting, we better get on with it. Let's go. Rose and Lawrence Obeck live in a beautiful part of the country, very near Lake Victoria and in the middle of lush green hills. But farmers in this area still have problems. Here on the shamb of Lawrence and Rose, we've been learning how to manage push-pull technology. And as Rose has to walk far to collect water, we're installing new guttering to harvest rain water. Next, Alois has more information for us on the benefits of push-pull farming technology. He will show us how to use the Napier Lawrence cut down earlier so the animals have fodder in times of drought or flood. Now, mm -hmm. uh, this is the silage pit, and then we have the Napier here, mm -hmm. and uh, these ones are also Napier mm -hmm. in these bags, and this Napier here. Then uh, we have uh, the black polythene sheet. Yes. That one, this is what we'll put down there. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we also have uh, uh, molasses, molasses, mm -hmm. and we have water. Good. So first of all, we may have to put the the Tony. Oh, you want me to help? Yes, I want okay, you to help. Okay, fine. Yes, yes, yes. What you will need to make a silage pit? Prepare a pit, preferably on a slightly sloping ground. As a rule of thumb, seventy-two cubic feet. That's two cubic meters holding about a thousand kilograms or 20 bags of fresh chopped material. Chopped material can be napier grass, sorghum, maize and sugarcane tops. To preserve your silage, you will require approximately 20 to 30 liters of molasses and 10 meters of polythene tubes. A large pit has already been dug and we place two sheets of polythene over it. What's yeah. next? Now, yeah. we have the Napier. Uh -huh. And uh, it's a little bit heavy. Yeah. I cannot lift it myself. But Maybe... you're the expert. I thought you were the expert. Uh, yes, but I want you to ask it, please. Let's go. OK, here we go. <laughs> all right. Put all your chopped Napier grass into the pit and spread it around. Next, Alois is making a molasses and water solution. So we take one kilogram of molasses. Uh -huh. That is equivalent to one liter of molasses. You add with three liters of water. One liter of molasses and three liters of water. Yes, in other words, mm -hmm. one part of molasses mm -hmm. into three parts of water. Okay. The solution is sprinkled into the pit. This will preserve the fodder. Now. Now that's done, what's next? Uh, can you step on it and jump because you are, you know, you are. Well, I've done this before. Yeah, yeah. Ah. Yes. yeah, see, I've done it before. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. This process is repeated adding more chopped napier, sprinkling more molasses diluted solution, and flattening the silage down until the pit is full. Next, the pit is covered with polythene sheet. This should be very tight to prevent water seeping in. Then the pit is covered with soil. This prevents air getting in and damage from rain, birds. Yeah, I'm making a small trench here, mm -hmm. all round, mm -hmm. so that if at all it rains, water should not get in. Water should just go round like that mm -hmm. and not to get inside the challenge. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. All right. How long does it have to stay inside there? Uh, once it has taken three months, uh -huh. then it automatically it is ready. Mm -hmm. yeah, you have to take it in bits, uh -huh. and then you must make sure that you cover it again. Uh -huh. And then when you come back again to, to get the materials, you, you open, you get the materials, you cover it again, uh -huh. until the time that you'll finish the whole of this material. Don't forget, making silage is a vital source of fodder for your livestock in times of drought and flood. Alois has another benefit of push-pull to show Lawrence, making hay. To do this, you'll need a pit, a ball of string, and cut desmodium from your push-pull field. You must only cut the desmodium line by line and should only be cut when the maize is mature. The desmodium must be dried in the shed. Dig a pit for the size of bales you require. In this case, we have a pit which is 60 centimeters 
by 45 centimeters by 45 centimeters. Place long pieces of string across the pit both ways. Place your dry desmodium on top of the string in the pit. Stamp it down and repeat the process until the pit is full. Tie the string tightly over the top and remove your hay bale. These hay bales can be stored in a cool dry place for more than three months. It's a very cost effective way of feeding your animals and all you need is a string. Now it's time to tackle a problem inside the house. Rose has difficulties reading using kerosene lamps. Okay, what do you think about this? No, this thing is uh, dangerous. Mm -hmm. Very much for reading. Yeah, right. Again, when you have it in the house like mm. this, you know, like now it is here. Right. You had a child carrying to going on the other side. It can yes. even get burned on the. Or oh, it can burn definitely. The, the it can burn the house. Yeah, it's yeah. It's not now, good. Now again, in reading, mm. there's a big problem in reading. Yeah, right. Yeah. So it got it got some smoke. You mm -hmm. see, there's a smoke. Yeah, here. I can still feel so the smoke. So when a child right. reading here like this, mm. you know, there's a wind coming on the other side of this side. Yes. So you find that the wind is affecting the the, the, the yes. smoke is coming in the eyes. So how much does it cost per month? Per month is cost one thousand two hundred per month. One thousand two hundred. So that means per day is forty. Yes, per day is forty. Forty yes, shillings per 40 day. Shillings. Forty shillings per day. That's a lot of money, isn't yeah. it? Excluding the transport. Excluding the transport. Because we are removing the paraffin from Homer Bay. From Homer and how from how far is Homer Bay from here? Yes, uh, a trip going and coming back is four hundred shillings. So four hundred shillings. Yes, when you go and collect the paraffin. Oh my God, that's because very expensive. Because in our local area here, yeah. you get it easier. And when you get it, it's very expensive. Wow, wow, yeah, those wow. Those are bringing up here and selling them is very expensive. So that's we a, cannot afford it. Yeah, that's, that's definitely expensive. So instead, expensive. you better go to bring it from Homer Bay yeah. in a cheaper price. And then you come back with it. So now, the cost of the transport is very high. It's very high. It's very high. I agree, I yeah. agree. Do you know, with 1,200 shillings, now you can get a solar lamp. Yeah. For 1,200 shillings, yeah. and that is just one off. Yeah. Then after that, yeah. it uses the sun, so you don't have to, you know, you don't call, no kerosene. Okay, okay. And you can okay, read with it okay. all. You can okay, read. That's you good. can see. That's good. That's that good. would be good, isn't that's it? That's very much good. A company called Delight produce a portable solar lantern. This one is called the Delight S10. The solar panel is built in, and so you just place it in the sun to charge. This light can last up to eight hours. Remember, using a D-Light solar lamp has many advantages. It is renewable, it is safe, it is clean, it is free to run, no more buying kerosene. Now, Rose can read easily without worrying about the cost of kerosene or the danger of fire. Meanwhile, Carice has had a busy day and managed to work on the guttering and the new kitchen. This chamber has certainly been shaped up. Well, it's been another great show here on Shamba Shape Up at the farm of Mr. and Mrs. Odero Adek. How did you find the new tips on the management of push pull? It's wonderful mm -hmm. and very cheap. Uh -huh. yes, you can just only plow it once uh -huh. and then you forget the whole thing. So, so you, it's very cheap. And so I you like think it. the new management skills are the, going to help you a definitely. lot? Definitely. Wow. Definitely. That will help me more. I'm happy to hear that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And about the goats, how do you think, how, what, what did you learn about wonderful, the goats? Wonderful. A change now. Mm -hmm. yeah. I learn a lot of things now. Mm -hmm. wow. I think the push pull is, has done a lot uh -huh. my goats. Yeah. And I now feed my goats in a better way. Uh -huh. So, I've learned so a lot. the push pull will, will transform your life in a, in a bigger, yeah. bigger, bigger I'll way. Get, I'll get enough milk the way I want. Ah, yes, yeah. and we taught you about the molasses grass. Definitely. And uh, the ticks control. Right. I'm sure you've learned something. The rationing of the feeds yes. for the goats uh -huh. is wonderful. How about you, Rose? You have a new kitchen? Yes. No more getting rained on when you're cooking? I'm happy about it. And there's gutter, so now and you I get it. Yeah. Yeah, mm. so what do you really think about the whole our visit? I can just give thank. Yes. Yeah. Oh, you know, you can speak English, <laughs> English now. <laughs> <laughs> and you, and yes. you have a solar lamp. Yeah. Even my solar lamp, I like it. You like. can read the Bible even at night now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> All right, so we have been very happy to be here. I hope that those skills will help you to make you a better farmer. And you're working very hard and we are very happy. 
Good. We are very happy with the kind of work that you are doing. I'm not going to run old now. Uh -huh. Just keep on. Like, <laughs> yeah. You'll be looking young all very the time. All the time. Ah, all the time. Yes. Oh, I, I'm very happy to hear that. Right. Yeah. Well, it's been another great show here. And thanks to Shamba, Shamba Shepa. Shepa.